Oh, can you go back? Okay. Hello. Hi. So there are a lot of people out there that are really mad about how often we talk about Harry Potter. <laughs> Read another book, they say, to which I always respond, who hurt you? They are right about one thing, though, in that simply mentioning Harry Potter is not activism. That's pandering, and we see what you're doing. Actual fan activism draws parallels between pop culture and real-world social issues. And when it's done right, it looks like Harry Potter fans convincing Warner Brothers to change all of their Harry Potter chocolate to fair trade. It looks like Color of Change convincing Disney to reanimate a movie. It looks like over 400,000 books donated and five libraries built around the world by Harry Potter fans. Now, the Harry Potter Alliance, which is where I'm from, hello, I'm Janae, nice to meet you. Uh, we have been around the block a few times by this point, and there are a few things that we wish people thought about in making fan activism the most effective that it can be. Now the first is that one of the major pillars of the methodology is capturing public imagination and redirecting that towards social good. Now that only works if the public is currently imagining it. So the time for a Lord of the Rings campaign was 2002, not now. No matter how much we still deeply love Legolas, and we do. The second is that you need a strong connection to your source material. So it made sense to talk about chocolate sourcing in Harry Potter, where chocolate is basically part of the plot, um, but maybe not so much in Game of Thrones. I don't even know if they have candy in that world. <laughs> How to destroy a narrative in eight seasons, perhaps. <sighs> now listen, we know that most of the media we love is being produced by like corporate capitalist conglomerates with their own agendas, we get it. Our relationship status with creators is often very complicated. But these stories like Harry Potter and Marvel, Star Wars and Star Trek, there's not a battle here, they've been reimagined and remixed and reproduced so many times at this point that they've grown beyond their original source material. These stories are the King Arthur tales of our time. So when you go to start a fan activism campaign, you don't start by trying to get Disney or Warner Brothers or the producers or actors involved. You start by finding the fans. Fan activism at its core is grassroots organizing. But listen, there's something very important to note here. Fans will recognize inauthenticity from a mile away. So the minute this is like a cute theme you're gonna use or a funny shtick or a way to hook those nerds, you've already lost them. And please, we are begging you, stop writing things in Harry Potter font. <laughs> it's not a good look. So what do you do instead? Well, you find the fans. And we don't exactly make ourselves hard to find. Like, that's kind of part of the thing, is announcing that you're into the thing and being like, hi, this is me. <laughs> so like, go to a fan convention, read fan fiction, do a deep dive on all of the shipping wars and AUs. And if you don't know what those words mean, congratulations, that's your starting point. <laughs> And if you don't have the time to do that yourself or you don't secretly have a staff member on your um, staff already who's a fan, which seems unlikely, but okay, um, find an expert to serve as a fan consultant and bring them onto your team the way you would any other consultant. Once you've done those things, it's try to, time to establish where you are in the story. So find what's happening in that narrative that connects to something happening in our world now. For us, we knew that in the seventh Harry Potter book, actually the reason that our heroes spend so much time camping is because they're running from people called Snatchers. Snatchers' job is to find Muggleborns, um, capture them, and send them to Azkaban, or wizard prison. And if that sounds familiar to you, it should. That's basically magical ice. So once you've established that, you remind fans, OK, why do we care about this? So it's actually framed as one of the most horrifying things that Harry has to witness, the Muggleborn Registration Commission, where a Muggleborn witch is taken in and interrogated, asked how she stole her magic, and threatened, literally, with being separated from her family. You remind fans that that is happening here, in our world, right now. And you ask them, what are we going to do about it? 
And this is the moment that every fan knows, where they sit down together as heroes and they pool their collective knowledge and resources and skills. And this is where your organizational expertise comes in, and they draw a battle plan. For the Harry Potter Alliance, that has been tens of thousands of calls made and letters written, and Harry Potter fans showing up at protests across the nation to try to close the concentration camps currently in this country. Fan activism is not just a cool theme for something that you've already designed. Fan activism is a partnership with communities that are powerful in their own right. Fan activism is a way to connect with people over something they love, something they love so much they just can't stop talking about it. Thank you. <laughs>